Hey everybody, Dan here with Harley Brief Tutorials. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Unity Input System. This is the Input System 1.0 that we'll actually have to download using uh, the Unity Package Manager, which I'll show you how to do later in this video. But first I want to give you a demo of what you can expect to learn in this video. So on screen I have an Xbox controller. That's mapped to show you exactly what I'm pressing uh, on the controller that I have in my hand. And then on screen I have three demos that we're going to do today. We're going to build uh, a use case for trigger, left stick, and then a button. So for the trigger, you click on Unity here. For trigger, as soon as I pull, start pulling down the trigger, you can see that this bar graph moves up. And it shows basically a percentage of how far I've traveled with the trigger. So if I'm fully in, I'm at 1. If I'm fully out, I'm at 0. Or if I'm halfway, it'll show 0.5. This is good for like variable speed or variable braking. If you need some variance uh, in whatever you're working on your, in your game, this is perfect for that. Or if you just want to use it as a shot, so it goes zero to one, you can do that. Now, the other thing I have in the middle is left stick. This is showing a vector two movement of the analog stick, for in this case, the left stick. You can also tie it to the right stick, or if you have mouse movement, you can use a mouse. So here, if, as soon as I move the left stick, it's just mapped one to one with a little box in the middle and it shows the rotation. You can see it actually rotating on screen with the Xbox controller shown on screen now. Lastly, we have a button demo, and this is just set up to the A button, so as soon as I hold A, it goes on. As soon as I let go, it turns off. This could be used for something like sprint, so if I have a player that's moving, I hold down A, their speed increases by a certain amount. As soon as I let go of A, they slow back down. It can also be used as like a jump, so if I just quickly tap it, A goes on, the player jumps, and then they come back to the ground and it goes off. So that's what you can expect to learn in this video. Let's jump into a new Unity project and we'll go ahead and download. Okay, so I'm in a brand new project, pretty much. I have just I have a canvas on here with some graphics, but I've disabled that for now because it's not important. But the first thing that we need to do to use the input system is actually go ahead and download the package. And the way to do that is you go to Window, you go to Package Manager, and then what you need to do under packages is it usually defaults to in project or my assets. What you want to do is click Unity Registry and then scroll down to where you see the Unity Input System 1.0. And then on the bottom right, there's an install button. You go ahead and click install. It's going to take a few minutes. It's going to download the package. It's going to set everything up in your project so that you can utilize the new input system. Okay, so once it's done installing, we can go ahead and close out of the package manager window and just do that by clicking the X. And then now we have a couple options, new options available to us. The first one being a new create option within the assets folder. So if I right click, go up to create, at the very bottom you'll see this new option called input actions. I'm gonna click that, it's gonna create a new asset which I'm gonna call game controls. You can label it whatever you want, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And this is what's gonna store all of our controls for the game. Once the asset's created, double click on it and open it up. It's going to open a new window where we can actually define all the actions and bindings that we want for our controls. The first thing you'll see is action maps. Action maps are where all the controls are stored, all the bindings and actions. You can have multiple action maps. So for instance, if you have a player that uh, can run on the ground, you might have and drive a car. You might actually have two different maps, one for the ground control and then another map for the actual car controls. That way you can define all those actions a little bit differently. But in this case, we only need one. So I'm going to click the arrow. We're going to create a new action map, and I'm going to call it player controls. And then we're going to create an action. The first action we're going to create is the trigger action. And this is pretty simple to set up. So what we want to do is go to new action, double click. I'm going to label it trigger. You can label it whatever you want. Basically, normally you would label this something as jump or fire, whatever the action is, uh, it, it really is. So if you're in the trigger in this case, it could be fire, maybe like it is a variable braking or variable speed, really depending on your game. Uh, we're going to leave the property action type as button, but there is value and pass through. We're going to explore value once we jump to the analog stick next. Uh, but in this case, we're going to leave it as button. Then what you want to do is click the button, the add button to add a binding. Actually, this already has a binding, excuse me. Uh, so click the arrow on the left, and then you'll see no binding. And this is what we're going to bind this action to a key. So in this case, we're going to bind it to the right trigger. So in path, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can search for it going through game gamepad and then find the trigger, or you can actually hit the listen button. And Unity will listen to the controller I have plugged up on my computer now and actually find what I'm pressing. So I'm going to hit listen. And I'm going to pull the right trigger, and you're going to see the right trigger 
uh, came up. I'm going to double click on it and that's going to be our binding. So this is the first action that we're going to set up. I'm going to exit out of this and then one thing that we do want to do with the game controls asset highlighted in the inspector there's this generate C sharp class checkbox. You want to check that and then hit apply. And what this is going to do is going to automatically generate a script and I'll open this up in visual code. It's going to automatically generate a script that allows us uh, to more easily code the action. We're back in Unity and we're going to begin coding the actions that we just created in the uh, game controls script that was generated by Unity. So in the hierarchy, we're going to right click, we're going to create an empty object. I'm going to label it game controls and then I'm going to go to add component and we're actually going to create a new script called player controls. And once it's created, I'm going to double click on it and open it up. I'm in visual code. And what we want to do is first change our start function to awake. And then we're going to create two private variables to get our trigger working. The first one is going to be a private game controls, which is the auto generated script that Unity made. And we're going to call this controls. And then we want to create a private float and we're going to call this one trigger value. And this is going to be used in a second to, to display the value from zero to one that our trigger is currently at. So now in our awake function, we first need to create an instance of game controls. So we're going to say controls is going to be equal to a new game controls. And then we're going to write two lines that are going to allow us to actually get the value of the trigger. And the first way we do that is by saying controls dot player controls. So this is the input map that we created. And then we're going to grab our action, which we can see there called trigger. <clears throat> Once we do that, then this enable, this allows us to find see three different events. The first one is started and then performed and then canceled. And they're used to well, the events are fired at different points of the button press or the trigger pool. And those events allow us to pass in a method or, or read some sort of value. So the first thing that we want to look at is perform. So as the trigger is pull, pulled, it's being performed, this event is going off and we want to add context to it. We want to add the ability to read what that value is. So we're going to say plus equals context and then the lambda function and we're going to say trigger value and we're going to set that equal to context. So this is what's being passed back from the trigger dot read value and we're going to be reading a float value. And this will make more sense once we set up the debug statement and you can actually read this value. But basically it's just saying we want to read the value of the trigger as a float and that's going to be from zero to one. And that's what I was showing at the beginning of the video with the bar graph going up and down. Now the last thing we want to do is set this up. So once the action is canceled, so once I release the trigger, I'm no longer pulling it. We want to set this value called trigger value back to zero. So we're going to say controls dot player controls. So again, our player, our input map, we want to grab our trigger, which is our action, and then we want to do the canceled event. We're going to do the same thing, plus equals context, lambda function, so equals and greater sign trigger value. And we're going to set this equal to zero, like that. So again, what this will do is as soon as we start pulling our trigger, we're going to begin reading the, the float value. And as soon as we let go of it, we're going to set that float value back to zero. And to make sure this works, we're going to add a debug statement to this. And we're going to say debug log. And we're going to say trigger value. And then we'll just do a plus and we'll say trigger value. And this will output it to our console so we can see. Now the last thing that we need to do to actually make this all work is we need to uh, turn on or enable uh, the controls and the way we do this is on the on enable and on disable function. So we'll say void on enable and we'll say controls dot enable. And then again, we want to turn it off. So we'll say void on disable and these are the built in unity methods. We'll say controls dot disable. There we go. Okay. So now this should work. So let's go into unity. We have the game controls object. It's set up here correctly. If everything works, we should be able to press play and I should be able to, let me turn the controller back on. I should be able to turn the controller back on and press the stick and we should see our values change. So as you see, as I'm slowly pushing the stick down, our values are going from zero to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to one as I hold it down and then I let go of it, it goes back to zero. And that's how you set up the trigger button. So off screen, I've gone ahead and added some GUI stuff. 
just so that it's more visually appealing to see what I'm actually doing. But here I've enabled the controller again, and as I hold down the right trigger, you can actually see the bar graph going up and down. And then the value there, the 0 0.666, 0 0.67, <clears throat> that's actually the, the float value that we're reading, or that we call trigger value. So as I go up all the way to one, we let go, it goes back to zero, which is that canceled event. This is the perform, this is the perform event firing, reading that value continuously. And then again, as I let go, we go back to zero. So now what we want to do is actually add the A button. So the A button is going to be an action button that we are going to create two methods that turn something on and off. And to get started, we want to go back into that game controller asset. We're going to add a new action. So we're going to go to the right and click the the arrow, or excuse me, the plus sign. We're just going to call this button, but you can label this action whatever you want. So in your game, you might want to label it something a little bit more verbose like jump or sprint or whatever the action may be. We're going to leave the action type as button, but we're going to go down to binding and then we're going to actually find our A button. So I'm going to go to path. I'm going to click listen. And when I hit the A button on my controller, it's going to find button south on the gamepad. I'm going to double click that. It's going to add it. And then we're done in this screen. We have it auto save. Unity will auto generate our game control script again, and we can jump into our player controls script. Let me turn off the controller and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to create two methods uh, below our update function. And the first one's going to be a pri private void and we're going to say turn on. And then below that we'll say private void turn off. Both these functions are just going to output a debug log warning. So we'll say debug.log warning. And we'll say turned on. Excuse me. Uh, and then we'll do a debug warning turned off. And this is just to show us that the action is actually working. So now that we have these two methods set up, we can actually call them using what we did up here before. So we'll say controls, we're gonna access our player input map, or our input map, excuse me, called player controls. We'll say button, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the new action that we just created. And we'll say started. We'll do our plus equals context again. And then our lambda, and instead of saying trigger value or button value is equal to something, we're just gonna say context, or excuse me, we're just gonna actually call our method. So we're just gonna say turn on. So what happens when the button started event fires, it's just gonna call the turn on method. And then again, we'll do controls.playercontrols button.canceled. And what this will do is call our turn off method once we, the button is let go. So now we should be able to go back into Unity and when we hit the A button, we turn it on, it's gonna say turned on and we let it go, it should say turned off. So let's go into Unity. I'm going to turn the controller back on so you can see what I'm doing. And we'll go to our console, clear that. I'm gonna turn on our warnings and press play. So here in the console, as soon as I hit the, press the A button, oh, let me click the game. As soon as I hit the A button, we have a turn on meth message. And as soon as I let it go, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Pretty simple. So now we're gonna go ahead and code the left analog stick. Off screen, I've added the rest of the GUI elements so that we can actually demonstrate all the buttons at the end of the video. You'll be able to see some of that code also in the script and that script will be available to download in the description below. And I've gone ahead and commented everything it says for GUI just so it's less confusing. But let's go ahead and, and set up the left stick demo and then we can actually demo all the GUI elements here. In order to do that, we need to go to our game controls asset and we're gonna add a new action. This action, I'm just gonna label left stick uh, again, you want to be a little bit more verbose and actually explain what the action is probably, but I'm just going to leave it as left stick. I'm going to hit enter. And then the action type, I'm going to change actually, and I'm going to change it to value. And then the control type, I'm also going to change, and we're actually going to change it to stick. Now for my binding, I'm going to click on it, and we're going to go to click the path. We're going to click listen, and I'm going to move the left analog stick. It's going to find it, gamepad left stick. We're gonna click that, exit out of it. Unity's gonna automatically save it for us and regenerate our game control script. We're gonna go into our player control script. And again, I've added some code here for the GUI. You can ignore that. But what we wanna do 
is add another private variable. So we're going to create a private uh, vector two this time, and we're going to call it left stick value. And this value is what's going to be returned when we read the context like we did uh, with this trigger. So below our controls here, we're going to add a couple lines of code. We're going to say controls.playerController. So again, our input map. We're going to look for our left stick, and we're going to look for the performed event. We're going to say plus equals to context, lambda, so equal and greater sign. And excuse me for that. We're going to say left stick value is going to be equal to our context.read value. And we're going to be reading for a vector two. And then once the action is canceled, so we've let go of our left analog stick, we want it, our vector to be reset back to zero. So we're going to say controls dot player controls dot left stick dot canceled. So this is when we let go of the analog stick plus equals context is equal to or greater than our left stick value is going to be equal to a vector two dot zero. And the vector two zero is literally just a vector of zero zero. This will reset our controls. I'm going to uncomment a line of code so that we can actually see the square move on the GUI. And we're going to add a debug statement here so we can see the values that are coming from the left stick. So we're going to say left stick and do a colon plus, and then we'll say left stick value. This should allow us to actually read the, uh, the value that's coming out. I'm going to comment out the other one, the trigger value, so we only see the left stick in the comments. And control us to save. Let's go back into Unity. I'm going to press play, and we should be able to see the left stick work. Again, I I've, have all the GUI connected. We should be able to see the values in the console below, as well as the value updating here in the center of the screen. Okay, let's press play, and we'll see as I move the left analog stick, the white box in the orange box moves according to the vector that's shown on the screen. So here I'm at you know zero negative one. If I let it go, it goes back to zero zero top left, top right, all the values are showing and you can see it's also showing in the console as well. I've also hooked up the trigger so if I hold the trigger down you see the blue graph goes up. Again this is a percentage from 0 to 1 of how far the trigger is pulled. All the way it's pulled it's 1, let go it's 0 and then for our A button if I hit it I'm holding it now it's on. If I let go it goes off, on, off. Again that'd be perfect for sprint. The left stick would be good for player movement or con camera control, something like that. And then the trigger could be fire or, uh, like again, a variable speed or variable braking. Really up to you and what you can come up with. So hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully you learned something. I know when I first started using this system, it was a little bit confusing. If you like it or if you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm going to leave this script in the description available to download. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time.